The Square Ball Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. This is Propaganda. The show is brought to you by Levi Solicitors. If you go to www.levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball, you'll get 10% discount on all of your legal fees. Michael, you got away with it on Monday because it was my first time in this chair. You can't give me the big three now. What are you going to give me? You see, Dan always tries to make out like I can't do this. And I think it's because he doesn't like to see me succeed. Okay. He, he, he likes to talk me down, whereas I could, if given the opportunity, talk at length about professional negligence. Please do. Lasting powers of attorney. I, there's not time. It's, it's just a, an advert, but I could if that, I wanted to. That does seem to be the same three, though, that you, you're leaning towards. Well, no, wills, probate and conveyance are the big ones. That's others. These are personal injury, personal dispute resolution, residential property disputes. These are other things. This shows how your message is cut through with me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to know that whilst ever I'm here, I support you. You can, uh, you can take you. as much time as you need. To, uh, to to talk at length about the good work that Levi Solicitors do. With the uh, discount. With the discount, 10% if you go to levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Uh, on the show today uh, is me again, Dean Smith. Uh, to my left, we walked here from Wales. It is Michael Normanton. And across from me, we walked here from the office. It is uh, Daniel Chapman, Moscow White. I came through that door. <laughs> you did, and you nailed it, mate. Um, so, yeah, this is Propaganda. Um, this is the show where we take a trip through the football world to see what has been said about Leeds United and beyond. Uh, this is a magical mystery tour, uh, which our tour guide today is uh, Michael Normanton. Where are we starting, Michael? It's Watford, unfortunately. It's not a great place. Mm, we drew. We drew. We drew. I was very sick in Watford once. Yeah, I once went to a karaoke night in, oh, in yeah. Watford. Yeah. <laughs> What's your song of choice? I wasn't singing. There was a lot of... Uh, Yes, I, I don't think I would have been welcome on that stage in that pub. It was all very well taken care of. Um, in the contestants' stakes, there was a lot of singers. But if I, you're just sat there, then it's just a bar to you. It doesn't. The, the karaoke thing is is incidental. Uh, at the volume it was going at, <laughs> it was not uh, incidental. I think there was a lot of um, the hits of Wham is what I remember being belted out by some. Um, Watford types. Nice. And wham, the ball went into the back of net from Matteo Joseph. So where are we um, in Watford, Michael? I was actually a bit on the karaoke, actually. There was um, a clip from inside the stadium, which I've not used because it'll get us a copyright strike on YouTube. But they seem to all be singing your song by Elton John. I didn't realise they actually did that as a like as a pre-match thing. Seems... Is that because he was there? I don't know. But the, the crowd were definitely singing along to it. And I thought, it's, it's quite nice, actually. <laughs> it's quite touching. <laughs> Quite a moving, quite a move for like a what's a kind of a end of season dead rubber for them. It was quite a nice emotional day for them. I thought. Yes, yeah. Let's turn it into an Elton John sing along. I once, uh, so we are going to talk about football at, at one point, but <laughs> um, sort of flights to the USA. I always complain about it. The reason I've never seen School of Rock is because it was being shown on that flight, and I was like, oh, very excited. Um, but my seat was right at the front of the cabin, and the screen was sort of exactly mm -hmm. perpendicular to me. So I couldn't see anything, but I could hear everybody behind me. Gales of laughter all the way, <laughs> nine hours of the USA. So um, I tuned into the, they had um, one of the radio channels was playing the greatest hits of Fleetwood Mac, followed by the greatest hits of Elton John on a loop. So I timed it so that I could tune into, um, I think the sequence on Fleetwood Mac, it went uh, Little Lies, The Chain, um, and then, oh, I can't remember. There was another one that was like three good Fleetwood Mac songs in a row. And then I would turn it off and then wait like 43 minutes <laughs> and then tune back into Elton John for Daniel. Lovely. Yes. Lovely. Yeah, so a little bit of uh, hear him singing about me and then turn it off for another 37 minutes and then Fleetwood Mac would begin again. So that was how I dealt with not watching School of Rock. Strangely, Daniel is also your song. Yes, so that's, it eats itself. I was really confused when Michael looked me in the eyes and said they were singing your song. And I was like, <laughs> they were singing Daniel. No, no. <laughs> but, they, but he also Another has a one. song called Your Song, which I think, I wonder which came first. Did he release Daniel first? And then loads of people were like, Wait, why don't we get a song? I'm sure Dan's talked about this before, saying how he was confused by it as a kid because the, the, the two things existed and he thought they were, but he basically thought Elton John was writing every song about him. I think was the was the gist of it. Listen, should we jump on the M1 and get down to what? Yeah, go on. Sorry, yeah. Um, do not scratch your eyes. He was inside Vicarage Road. They, I mean, all, overall, I will say the Watford fans were really happy. They were because they've had kind of a shit season, going nowhere. I think they expected to lose this, and they played better than us for mm. for a good portion of it anyway. 
Um, so they were quite happy, but do not scratch your eyes from inside Vicarage Road. Was not happy when we scored. Ah, two old. And that's coming out of nowhere. We're the better size. Just fucking let him get in. Fucking hate Leeds. What she said. Yeah. Shit. I love that. that. That is such a football noise. The first noise he makes. Ah. We know exactly how he's feeling in that moment. We've all been there. Watford fans can't hate us, can they? What if we don't? I suppose there was that time we stopped them getting promoted when um, Dominic Polian killed a man. Yeah. Or whatever it was. <laughs> but we didn't stop them get promoted at the Millennium Stadium. No, exactly. That was quite nice of us. And in fact, actually, I think, do not scratch your eyes. Didn't that come from the, that goal in the playoffs, which came when they ended up in the playoffs, after... We put them in the playoffs yeah. by stopping them going up. So you're welcome. Well, the, the greatest Dini moments in their history, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so they've got us to thank for their, their YouTube sensation. Exactly. Dini. Exactly. I think you need a certain amount of um, anger for that for that delivery, though, with the rah, um, and the oh, no, and the what she said <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have worked if they were having a good, a good time. Mm. Too much, it would have turned into too much of a knees up. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. I don't think Watford's knees up territory, is it? Did you hear them? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I well, agree with you, but did you hear them? Maybe it's um, they're the Lily Allen of uh, Watford podcasts. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think um, the, the that's what she said. Um, uh, comment is is lazy YouTubing. He should have had his own thought in his head. Why is he not coming think, out with another belter there? I think it was the noise that was the thought. On good football noises, actually. Josh Spurs one two three as the name would imply, is a, a Spurs fan, did a little video of this because he, he says he goes to Watford for a bit of fun. So I guess he's like one of these sort of moved out of London, home counties now, kind of goes to his local team when he can't go to Spurs. But his mum um, lives around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Um, but I think as a neutral, it's the right noise to make is this for the uh, for the Somerville goal. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Very much so. There's a, there's some respect put on Somerville's name with the oh. You can even be watching football in a bar in a game that you don't know what it is. It can be like Real Sociedad against Valencia or something. It's just all in the background, and you'll see a, you'll see a shot like that going, and you'll go oh. Yeah. It's that lovely um, moment in a bar when no one's watching the football, but everyone's got an eye on it, mm -hmm. and there's a tiny silence whilst you wait for the ball to hit the back of the net, and then there's just a general noise of appreciation that reverberates around the mm -hmm. place. Very nice, very nice. Um, back to an actual Watford van. I'm guessing this is a postcode. A WD18? Must be. Or a, Isn't that a lubricant? I was going to say a lesser known, one of the lesser known lubricants. <laughs> um, but there's a little bit of ref moaning. They thought it was a penalty. Did we dismiss it as not being a penalty because we didn't want it to be a penalty? I can't remember the incident. It was played across the box. Ampadu kind of went for a ball he couldn't quite reach. He'd booted someone in the heel a bit. But then he took a... I think he probably would have got a penalty if he'd gone down straight away, but he took a little step and then remembered he needed to go down. And oh, so the ref didn't give it. Was was he laying the, the, the foundations for the house that Calvin built later in the uh, in the, the weekend? It was, it was probably more of a penalty than that Calvin one, actually, was it? truth be told. I don't know if my brain is so, like, VAR addled by proxy, but I feel like if I don't see a referee... Um, watching something over and over again, I just assumed mm. there wasn't there were no penalty incidents. <laughs> They're just not registering. There's um, the NWSL has kicked off at the weekend, and one game they had the the screen uh, seemed to be inside a water cooler, which was quite. And they're like leaning over, and the the um, uh, the great delivery on that at some point <laughs> they have to turn around and say, "Well, I have I have gazed inside the water cooler, and it says there is a penalty." <laughs> yeah. But if there's if there's none of that sort of theatre around it then I'm just I'm struggling to remember these penalty incidents that people keep talking about wasn't that the the game we had recently where was it the Preston fans or something we were all up in arms about a penalty incident I had no idea anything that happened <laughs> there is with football fans though, I always feel like we are we have a selective memory if it's something that has gone against us we'll hold on to mm, that for yeah. months whereas if if Ampadu has kicked somebody's Achilles clean off I'm going to forget about it <laughs> Within a thir within thirty seconds. Yeah, he's made a meal of that, hasn't he? You yes, can't uh, you can't be giving them. What's the W eighteen for you anyway? What's they saying? 
I've seen a few people, I haven't seen it back, say Watford could have had a penalty as well. And a lot of 50-50s appear to go Leeds' as way, but look, it is what it is. I do think Leeds will win the league. I think they're a really, really good side with a good manager. And I think the fact we contained them to a point tonight is a huge, huge credit to us. Um, so, yeah, on to West Brom on Monday. Hopefully, they'll be able to recover in time for that because they genuinely, like I say, put everything into that. Even he couldn't remember it. No. People, said, people, oh. I think people watching on telly thought it was a penalty. So he had no idea. The referee, actually, that has reminded me, was um, ostensibly kind of good, letting lots of things go. But um, for our first game back after the international window, I, I really would have liked to whistle happy, don't touch our boys mm. kind of guy, giving everything because it it did get a bit, um, I think, from the, the start when Somerville was pushing that guy over because he'd fouled him about three times and he was, wasn't getting a free kick. Um, it set the tone, a tone that I would have liked under any other circumstances. Good old contact sport, lots of um, stuff going on. But then, uh, yeah, I didn't really. As it wore on, I was just wishing for some free kicks so that our um, sore legs would survive. Joe, Joe Rodon has enough painkillers for everyone, surely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think WD40 makes some good points. He says that we're going to go up as champions. We're the best team in the league, got a great manager. So I tend to believe him. I think it probably should have been a stonewaller. Uh, oh, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, right, yes. Um, we'll go to now you Orns, who is the guy... Well, it's this guy. Yeah. That guy. You remember him, mm. don't you? I do. Which Elton song is... Uh, which Elton song? I've ruined my own joke. Which Elton John song is that? That was <laughs> going to be funny if I'd said it properly. Never mind. <laughs> People can... Yeah, it together. there was something in there that might have been mildly amusing if people want to repair it and try but yeah, he's on got, my behalf. He's in California as this guy, which explains why he's got a slightly weird transatlantic drawl. Um, but he is here talking about our performance in the second half and prospects for the season. And again, like the first guy, got a good head on his shoulders, knows what he's talking about. Got to credit Leeds. They started to play better in the second half, a lot better. And you could see in the last 10 to 15 minutes of the game that we were really hanging on for the point. So if you look at this, it wasn't really a case of two points dropped, despite the disappointment in knowing that we had the lead twice in this game. It was more a case of Leeds picked up their levels with their subs. Daniel Falker put on two subs who were very effective. One of them scored within 10 seconds of being on the pitch. Joseph, that is, scored within 10 seconds of being on the pitch. Joseph on Good Friday, you know, scoring for Leeds. It was a sloppy goal. Watford should have done better to clear their lines. But again, Leeds are a very good side. And Daniel Falker's done an excellent job with that Leeds side. And they're going to go up regardless whether it's as champions. I think they will go up as champions. Was was Joseph a big part of the story on Good Friday? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd... I mean, he wasn't even a big part at Christmas. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Stepdad. Got him some eggs. He was the donkey carer. Got, um... Je got Jesus some eggs. Um, but then he probably had... He'd have had one of the days with his real dad. I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, I could see Moscow trying, <laughs> yeah, trying to work out what exactly... Desperately Googling. I must admit, the, the thought did cross my mind, because as someone who's not religious, I, in my head it did go, oh... Easter, Joseph, Jesus, there's... He's clutching. There's something mm. there, but... Um, He's clutching. And that is a bizarre accent. That sounds like an AI estimation of what a human sounds like. It is a lot like the the um, AI things you get on YouTube and stuff. That, my, I can often hear them because my kids are just watching random <laughs> nonsense on YouTube. And, like and, it, and it kind of sounds like... <laughs> they tell me off, actually. They do, they do occasionally watch bits of this and tell me off for swearing. Oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you swear on your podcast, so I'm like... It's not. It's not really for you. You shouldn't be watching it. They're like, <laughs> but you know, the um, I think we struggled with the uh, with Mr. Orns before because I can't concentrate on what he's saying because I'm always distracted by how nice his voice actually is. That's one thing. So I'm sure he said some stuff. Um, but then I've found the Wikipedia page for Easter and Control Left, and there's no mention of Joseph. So I don't know where he was by that time what he was up to but he's certainly nothing um worthy of being edited into wikipedia he was with his new well. family somewhere else maybe he's the easter bunny there's a nice uh, picture of a, an easter egg that somebody's painted the, the bunny on okay is that, is, so, that, is that joseph maybe him i think this bunny is hanging out with some chicks all right cool yeah maybe that's what joseph was doing on easter weekend <laughs> where are we going next michael 
we'll stick away with, from this. We'll stick with you, Ons. We're going to. Um, they've had Tom Cleverley in charge for well, Leeds was his second game, wasn't it? They beat Birmingham away, which they weren't great in. But this this half against Leeds, where they were good, has persuaded him that they should keep keep Tom Cleverley. And well, why do you think he wants to keep Tom Cleverley? Because he's an ex-Man United player. Not quite. Oh, he's he a Watford the legend, isn't he? He knows the club. Tom Cleverley has got to stay the manager of this team. Take the interim tag off in the summer and make him your new head coach. Give him a contract. Keep him here. I don't care if Watford were to lose four of these remaining seven games that they've got. You've got to keep some kind of continuity. And what better way to do that than to give Tom Cleverley, someone who knows the club, someone who knows the players, someone who's been here at the club for a long time in two different spells, and someone who knows the fans and has an idea of the pulse of the fans. I've spoken to Tom Cleverley personally several years ago, said a few words to him, very nice person, really decent person. He's been a fine ambassador for this club. I wonder what the, the words were he spoke to him. Just to, he picked a Hi, newspaper Tom. up. No, I think it was just random words. Scissors, <laughs> horse, uh, meal. That was it. He seemed nice, so therefore he should have the job. Yeah, and also he said in there, uh, we need some continuity. Watford and continuity in the same mm. sentence. That's like a, it's the biggest oxymoron on the planet. It's some continuity of, thinking. Uh, like of what? Because they've not been good for two years, have they? And Tom, and this, and the argument is that Tom Clevel has been there the whole time while it's been terrible, mm. as well as this good half against Leeds. They went to West Brom as he was trailing there to see what they did. They went 2-0 up by the 66th minute. They could have done it by an easier to pronounce time, which would have been helpful. And they let it go, conceded to Furlong in the 91st minute uh, for a 2-2 draw. Is that, so Paul, is that Paul Furlong's son? Have we discussed this before? Mm. I, just, I just assume every footballer now is the son of a previous Premier League footballer because there are loads of them kicking about, aren't there? Yeah, this is Darnell and Darnell Furlong's dad. This, this We're back to um, the sound of blokes googling. <laughs> I like the fact that Tom Cleverley knows the club better than most of all because he's, he's had two spells there. Yeah. So he's gone. He, he knows probably like his way there and back better than most people too because he's had to leave and then come back so and he knows if there's a road closure he knows how to get there on b roads like you know exactly it's, it's all about timekeeping and pulse of the fans yeah can do that yeah and he uh darnell is paul furlong's son disgusting it's nice <laughs> <laughs> nepotism true but paul furlong should still be like playing for rushton and diamonds or something in my opinion should just be kicking around still in the lower leagues but i i accept he's probably in his 60s so he's an academy coach at qpr according to wikipedia he's last known oh, okay okay um, so there we go. We've we've got Dan all for them all sorted out. Should cool. we hear a bit more about why they should keep Tom cleverly? I don't know how much more. I mean, the argument's been won, hasn't it? If you keep Tom cleverly on, at least it sends a signal and a message that you're going to do things homegrown, build from without, build from within. Added that bit. I don't know if it works. But oh, you, know. you added that. Bit. Oh, so. <laughs> it just it just came to my mind when he said it. I was like, I don't know what build from without means. I think he's just saying stuff, isn't he? He's got the value of a good voice, so he can just say whatever. It's fine. Mm. Do you think he's got a good voice? I quite like it. Yeah, yeah. it's quite soothing. It is quite smooth. It's a little bit. If he was a like doing voiceover work, I don't think it would work because I'm not concentrating on anything he's saying. So he can get away with just build from without. From that first clip, within. I think he'd get a gig as a cartoon cow or something. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, on, the, on his accent, I'd be interested to know what Americans make of it. Do they think he sounds just pure English, I wonder? Because he sounds like a weird blend to me. Yeah, maybe they think he sounds like the, the Queen. You do a good Jesse Marsh impression, don't you? I do a bang average Jesse Marsh this impression. Is, this, is, this is to pile pressure on you now. You can, you can come back to it if you want, but I, I remember hearing it and thinking, oh, that's good. That's I'd like good. to hear it now. Okay, I'll give you a little bit. It's, <laughs> it's, it's mainly just a lot of buzzwords, speaking 20% louder than you need to with a vaguely, where's he from? Massachusetts. Uh, no, Wisconsin. Yeah. Wisconsin. I, I don't have the specifics on that. But this, this, is, the, this is the vague approximation. Um, 
So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're working uh, to get better in moments. And, uh, you know, the guys out here are trying their best. Uh, we're trying to reduce stress as much as we possibly can. We don't want the boys to be stressed. Uh, they've been playing uh, heavy metal music in the showers for uh, the last three weeks, and it's uh, it's working really well. Cree is playing great. I, I don't know where he is. I think I think he's in Leeds, but he could be anywhere in the world. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I closed my eyes for a moment and wanted to strangle you, so it was obviously, <laughs> it was definitely working. I have that effect on a lot of people. I know that Cree is Somerville's name that they all seem to call him, but because I heard Jesse calling him at first, it, I hate it. Mm. And I, I think he should be called, I think he should find another nickname. What was your suggestion, B? Well, I think we've, we've gone with Jimmy before, haven't we, for mm. the Somerville link. But I accept that for a, a man growing up in, in Holland 20 years ago, the, you know, probably doesn't have a huge amount of relevance yeah. to him. Yeah. He um, could go the traditional kind of Chrissy, Summersy. S- Summersy. Yeah, he's got to have an E Sums. in there, doesn't it? Cree-y. Cree-y. Sense. Sense. Just, just Sensey? Yeah, Sensey. Sensey, that's good. Billy. He's got a lot to work with. Mm. his middle name is. Yeah, we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. Where okay. are we going next, Michael? Uh, that's, enough of, um, that's enough of Watford, isn't it? Um, mm. We go to old Grandpa Joe. He's not old. He's definitely not a grandpa, I wouldn't say. It seems biologically impossible. He's, I'd say he's in his 20s, this lad. But he's doing whole stuff on YouTube. And he seems mainly to be, this is clipped together from a few um, a few different sections of his video, seems mainly to have a, a real, like, be in his bonnet about the atmosphere at Ellen Road. I don't know if it's a thing in Hull that people are annoyed about, that Leeds gets a reputation for having a good atmosphere and he's, like, desperate to disprove it or something. I, I kind of agree it wasn't a great atmosphere as well, but um, this is him just moaning about it. We'll just say with 25 minutes to go, the famous Elland Road Leeds home atmosphere has been, well, it is an absolute myth. First 10 minutes, fair enough. Since then, nothing. It's Crescencio Somerville. Won the penalty. He's going to take the penalty. Ryan also in blue to beat in front of the Don Revy stand. Straight down the middle. He's booked for taking his serve. But he won't care. And now we might see a bit of that famous Leeds home atmosphere. Seven minutes added. We're giving it everything, we've thrown Alfie Jones up front. Leeds have woken up, I cannot emphasise to all you lot. I don't care which club you support. Leeds have been so quiet all game. From the moment they scored, they gave it a bit two minutes afterwards and that was it. They've been silent, but now, naturally, that was their their number one uh, go to. Where's your famous atmosphere? Mm. Um, and I, I I just feel like you're you're really tempting fate there. It was finely balanced, and then they really felt the full force of that famous atmosphere in the last ten or so. I think it's a it's a bit. I, you get more with Huddersfield is where I associate this with primarily is like the kind of chip on shoulder about Leeds in many different things, and I think because we're doing well. It's like we can't really criticise them for not winning games anymore or for not selling out. So you can kind of go, oh, well, the atmosphere is not as good as it should be or something. I'm not sure how much it contributes to a good football atmosphere if you're just talking into your phone and moaning about how nobody's singing. <laughs> Nobody is singing, can't believe it's miserable at, at Leeds. Oh, and by the way, there's been a booking because somebody's taken the shirt off, which I could probably find out from other sources rather than the guy chatting. Well, yeah, nobody's singing here. He's, was he helping? What was he doing, old Grandpa Joe? He was also refusing to film any of the match, which was weird. He said, at one point he said, I'm, I'm not going to show you the penalty for obvious reasons. And is I thought, it, well... It's copyright? Apparently it's strictly so. Strictly speaking, you shouldn't be doing any of but this. But like everyone does that. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, he seems to think that he's had some sort of word from someone that he shouldn't be doing it. There were people in the comments saying, this is completely pointless because you're, <laughs> you're not showing anything that's happening. What does he, uh, what does he show instead? Just his face. Great. <laughs> Just his face from like a low angle, which is a really flattering for anyone who's got like a face unlock or accidentally turn your camera on. Yeah. Horrible view, isn't it? Yeah. When you, or when you, you see yourself on your phone in bed and you go, oh, 
Oh, fucking hell, it's old Grandpa Joe <laughs> staring back at me. There was a real classic of the genre, though, in that clip, which is that beautiful little silence before the ball hits the back of the net. Mm. And it's always better from the away uh, end as well because you can hear it super crisp. Yeah. Super crisp. I well, think that's a really relaxing sound when you hear that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got as well now the the minute from, this is Glimpse HC. Um, they're actually filming the game, despite the uh, the warnings they may have been given. But this is... You, you can hear some of that in here. This is the last, well, not the last minute, the minute of the game where they are having those corners. George is trying to run it out. Dan James is scoring. Great memories. <laughs> oh, the stress. But it makes, <laughs> that felt like a long time in the ground, didn't yeah. it? That whole thing. It's, like, it's under a minute and it sounded like this from the West Stand. We're on the pitch. If all sub scores, we're on the pitch. It's not over, it's not over, it's not over. Stay in, stay in also. Go on, go on, go on. No. Oh, no. Go on. Oh. It's over now. It's all over. It's all over. It's all over. Full spectrum of human emotion there <laughs> in such a short clip from such a young man. That's why football's good though, isn't it? That bit where you can be like, oh, this is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> oh, he's gone from the halfway line. <laughs> I'd forgotten about the mentor. I was enjoying his, uh, there was the very whole no, no. in there, <laughs> which was really nice. And it's all over, <laughs> which um, it's good. I enjoyed that. That but, sounded a lot like your northeast accent. Well, I will say. North of the Umber. <laughs> I've got a bit of Sunderland, actually. Should we have that now? Just one little clip. Yeah, why not? Because they lost 5-1 at home to Blackburn, didn't they? Which, which weren't great. By the end of it, they were, they were kind of taking it in good spirits. But um, they started off playing all right, it seems. This is the goal that leads to Blackburn's second. There's a free kick given. The guy, as you'll hear, doesn't agree with it. And then into the goal. This is unedited. This is just how it is. It's not the mad mistake that you can hear. It's some bloke near him. Um, but it's just some it's just some good northeast ref abuse. Let's get this out, Sullen. Out on a free kick, man. Ref you Thirty-five minutes gone, two 0 the Blackburn. Excellent. Yeah, I think there's. Uh, I'm remembering now. If I tried to do any of this stuff at games in our youth, um, some of the things that would have been picked up <laughs> on the microphones would perhaps uh, not have gone so well on the internet. That was quite mild. But yeah, just hand it over to the, the ranting guy next year. And you don't get um, many more words that that kind of drag us up towards the northeast by uh, saying sentences and then saying like man or man yeah. it's such a lovely punctuation for that part of the world yeah fuck a dickhead man it was dickhead here like that was the one there's a dickhead here yeah when you translate it it's like gentlemen call the authorities there is a dickhead here he must be dealt with let's that get back was good let's get back to ellen road anyway no yeah. dickheads there no well no no, actually not the whole boy. We've had him on before. He was the one who went to Leeds against Norwich and made it sound like the time of his life. Is that... he still bothering his grandparents? Yes. Before and after every match. He's, oh, is that um, that guy? That guy, yeah. Oh, he, sweet. He, they're in they're in person on this video. Actually, he's gone. He's gone around to see him. It's, it's, he's so sweet. I, I really. I, I Did just... you not draw the curtains? <laughs> Marcus is here. Oh dear, <laughs> he's coming. He's coming to ask me what we think. What, what we're going to do against Leeds? I don't know. He's got just, his selfie stick. I'm just humouring him. But I, I do I think he's dead nice. Him and his mates were also confused, by the way, about the um the formation. I know you, you were mentioning Coyle and I was trying to work it out afterwards as well. Mm. And they were saying they thought it was a back five, but then it looks like Coyle was just playing centre back in a back four. 
So, I mean... Anybody's hey, guess. Rosinia, visionary. Possibly so, possibly so. But um, this is him pre-game talking about the game in general and about Leeds' whole rivalry. This is the biggest game for the last few years. Certainly the biggest game of the season. If we do not win today, season is over. We have nothing else to play for. And it just so happens that we could be killed off by our biggest rivals in Leeds United. I do want to stress, though, Leeds fans do not care about us. It is a very much one-sided rivalry. That is because all the teams local to us sort of got their own thing going on. Grimsby, Scunthorpe, Lincoln, they all face each other. So we just pick Leeds, like half the Championship does. I kind of feel bad for Leeds, to be honest. Every game they play, the opposition treat it like a cup final. And again, it will be today. And not just because of the rivalry, not just because of the localness, but because how much this game means to us. And I'm honestly sweating buckets. It's going to be probably the best away end we've had for years. It's going to be packed out. But it's also going to be the most nervous I think a lot of us fans have felt for a long, long time. Sweating buckets. <laughs> He's he's mixed a couple of, uh, of of phrases there, I believe. Should it not be bullets, Moscow? Um, I'd say buckets. You could say you do say, but I think Can both you, exist. A bucket full of sweat. A bucket full of bullets. Yeah, I was thinking because there are no kind of elegant metaphors in all this. People saying that they are shitting themselves. It's not particularly <laughs> a attractive um, image to describe nerves, but it feels sort of very whole that the thing that you would go for is sweat. Yeah, I'm just I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Do, you remember, do you remember when Paul Jules had that? Oh, uh, no, don't do this. <laughs> do you not remember Paul Jules' sex tape? Yeah, unfortunately, I do. No, I don't. Pray tell. It's when he was God. Derby manager, um, he was caught having an affair, and there was video footage of it. Is this all legit? This is all mm, legit. The, I think page news. It was. Was it ram raided or rampant or Stop something it. in the headline? Rampant. Rampant. To tie in with the sweat aspect. But there was a. There were quotes from Paul. It never, I don't think the footage of it was ever released. There were some stills, <laughs> including one of them when we bent over a car, I think. I'm a bit worried because Moscow's Googling something. So. Yeah, I'm just getting the quotes. But, right. um, if we're but, doing it, we're doing it. <laughs> but I think I'm pretty sure one of Paul Jewell's quotes from it was... I can give you it exactly if you want. Don't, was it, don't be nice, tell me uh, I'm sweating. Yeah, it's, um, I'm sweating. Be nice. Don't worry about upsetting me. Tell me I'm sweating. Good lord. Uh, but uh, the News of the World point out that he kept his T-shirt on to hide his overweight midfield as he goes for goal in a variety of formations. Well, that's just speculation because he's kept his T-shirt on to keep sweating because he likes it. Maybe so. He had a bin bag on under it. You know, like, um, <laughs> like the footballers used to, to get the, get the booze out. He had a little three-bar heater next to the bed. Good for him. Sweaty Paul Jewell. Mm. That was a left well, turn, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. I'm glad we went. You can, Thanks, you can, I think you can sweat buckets. You can sweat cobs. Cops. Yes. You can sweat bullets. Sweat cops. Sweating bullets was a mega death song. Was it really? It was. There you go. It's an education in this chair. Something from my something from my youth there. Um What's next? Is he at his um nan's house when he's sweating? No, I think it looked like he's in his bedroom. Okay, that's all right, because you can't go around your nan's house and start sweating all over the upholstery. <laughs> Do you want to hear from his mum? Yes. So he's 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 a really he's going to the game with his mum, he's in the car at this point. And you can hear from his voice and everything. He's just a really, he's really enthusiastic. And having heard his mum, I don't really know where he gets it from. It's a nice day for it. I'm looking forward to the game. Hey, you, mum. <laughs> Optimistic as always. Now, I'm with a weekly segment. How many is Jaden scoring today? None. <laughs> 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 that is a lady who is very much persuaded to be on her son's YouTube channel. Just absolutely cut down. It's going to be good, isn't it? No. No. <laughs> I like that that's a regular feature as well. Does she say that every... How many is Jaden going to score this week? None. No. <laughs> Great. Tick the feature gonna off. No. You're going to have a good time. She might be mega aware. She might be a, one of the greatest comic actors of our time and she's just giving him that character every week. The timing of it was nicely. Nice, yeah. I have to say. It was, it was good. Um, so this is him now arriving in Leeds, and he's at, he's at the ground really early, um, and he does also get a bit lost. I didn't realise how big Leeds City Centre was. It's massive. Here we go, Ellen Road Stadium and Edenley Stadium. And there it is. I, I'd say it's blooming beautiful. I've been here four times. So it wasn't really hitting me with a shock, but it is. It's a lovely ground, really. And we haven't took a wrong turn in this time. Why can I hear bagpipes? <laughs> Fair enough. Right, we're on foot. I'm gonna go check out the bagpipes. I mean, it is beautiful. I think I've took a wrong, I think I've took a wrong turn. I've ended up in hospitality, I don't know where I'm going. We're out the hospitality bit. 
I have to go to the toilet and end up watching Gary in his three course mail. <laughs> he somehow ends up in the toilet in the in the east stand. That was a real odyssey there. Took us all over the shop. Yeah. And Gary who? I think he's just giving a name of a person who we may have seen. Um, I think he's got a little bit of the uh, the Warnocks in his delivery, ever so yeah. slightly. Ever so slightly. Uh, I've, I've been here four times. <laughs> Lovely ground, really. <laughs> It took the wrong turn. He's got he's got a little bit of that cadence. He had that when he was talking about the rivalry before, where he's like, "We just pick, we just pick Leeds after the championship picks Leeds." He's, he needs to be careful. It's one of these things where, um, can it be like, have we caught it early enough that he can still be treated? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where do you get sent for treatment if you sound like Warnock? Not Cornwall. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, but he's not got the Plymouth job, has he? Yeah, it's funny that they've sacked Fozzy. Um, I'm liking that. That's him trying to drill into the studio now. If anybody <laughs> can idea. hear it in the background. But yeah, he must be, um, he's got to be angling for it. Even Could, though they've given it that director of football mm. to the end of the season, he'll be down there because they're giving him... Uh, think he'll just turn up? Well, they were giving him complimentary tickets at the start of the year, mm. weren't they? Because he was saying to... I'd, I was saying to him like, last year, and he'd, he'd been talking at the start of the season about the idea of managing Cliff. So next game, next time they're at home, he'll just be scooting around going, oh, not doing, he's not doing great this like this like is he? I know he's uh, he's been here a while. He's doing his best, but maybe he doesn't need a bit of experience. Do you want me to go down to the dressing room? Yeah, should I go and have a word? <laughs> maybe he'll just turn up with some like face paint and paint the kids' faces. That's what I want to make people happy. You know, bring a smile to their face. I'll paint a smile on the faces if needs be. Could paint his hairless body. Imagine that, <laughs> man. Look, you've done the Paul Jewel. Paul thing. Jewel. Now we're uh, yeah, Paul we're... Jewel. You couldn't paint his body. It'd be dripping off him. <laughs> Can oil slick behind? Uh, those bagpipe sellers, the bagpipe sellers, the bagpipe player, by the way, is an absolute scourge of the square ball seller who has to stand um, about five metres from him. Oh, gosh. And try and sell, because no one chooses to listen to bagpipes, do they? No, it's mainly you thrust don't put upon money, you. You don't put them on in the car, do you? No. I or, say or at so. home, you're just like chilling out, bottle of wine, should we put some music on? <laughs> bagpipes. Turn it up to 11. Nobody, nobody wants it. <laughs> Where are we going next, Michael? He's in the ground. Um, and he's with a couple of his mates. One of his mates reminds me of it's me, Fraz. If you know um, of, of him off YouTube, he's sort of vaguely related. To, he's from Bradford. Does some stuff with the Bad Boy Chiller crew. Mm-hmm. Cool. But he, he reminds me of him a little bit. Anyway, but his mates uh, are both very good at predictions. What's your score predictions? He's going three one leads. Everyone's saying that. I know it's confident. Now we're joined with Lucas. We're going to have to shout here. Yeah. What's your score predictions, mate? Well, you said everyone's optimistic. Well, I'm not. I think we're going to lose 3 1. Uh, Somerville twice, and Dan James, and then two fan with a late consolation. Optimistic as always. Well, there you go. These two were visited by the same ghost as me that yeah. whispered 3 1 into my ear. Um, it, I, I, I think that. Um, Coming to an away game that uh, he's said before is the um, the biggest game of his season. Uh, I can't remember the exact quote. Uh, what, uh, what else is there left to play for after this when they're six points off the playoff and then meeting everyone and they're just saying, well, we're just going to lose. There's not much um, There's not much hope to rally around there, is there? No. Correct score on two of the two of the scorers as well. Mm. Yeah, that's good going. Really good going. Um, should we hear the Leeds opener? And I, I think I was a bit confused by it as well, this one, because I was saying I wasn't sure if it was the ref had disallowed it or whether it crossed the line or something. And I think he goes through a similar um, kind of bit of bargaining here as this goes in it, but it's a very half-hearted appeal. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 don't, don't matter. That was very quick, you said. Very quick, no, no, you said. No, 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 don't, 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 don't He said matter. since Byron, he? Because uh, um, uh, Dan had texted me before the uh, the match ball saying it had gone in off his eyes. He's, he's come out and said it was his teeth. Mm-hmm. Thrust it in with his molars. I think Somerville could score off his teeth too. Big old set of teeth on him, anti Somerville these days. I think I think basically all the squad have had him redone mm-hmm. in the last few years. And I think they've, they've put some extras in Somerville. <laughs> I, don't know if he's got, I don't know if he's just got a particularly big or small mouth, but it... Some other contrast of it. It's a bit Jürgen Klopp. Yeah, Stuart Dallas. Mm. It's almost like he's preparing for his managerial career with uh, <laughs> with those. Joffe had his done too, didn't he? That was a bit of a shock when I first saw his. Well, isn't the... Um, there's a dentist. They have a dentist. Mm. They go to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> they do, yeah. <laughs> but I'm remembering because... Um, That's the, the, the luxurious lives that footballers have. They can actually get dentists. Well, that was one of the things when um, J. Roy Grott was here and his then-girlfriend was... Um, making vlogs about their life was that we had footage of J. Roy Grott in a dentist's chair having a checkup. 
one of the most exciting <laughs> glimpses into the, the world of a non-loan footballer um, that you could ever see. Where is he now, Big J, right? Japan. Is he? He is. Big nice in Japan. Japan. Yeah, I don't know if he's scoring lots of goals because um, I have got the goal alerts um, <laughs> and they don't pop up very often. But yeah, he's uh, he's gone to play for uh, Kashiwa Resol. Oh, nice. And his, let's see how many goals he's scoring. I had big hopes for him when he came in. I thought in a in that season where a lot of those players were crap, I thought, well, he might, he might turn into something. Well, he looked magnificent because mm. he was really tall and really muscly. Mm-hmm. And he was fairly quick. And so you thought, oh, he's got to be good. Yeah. And then there was a bit involving a ball and it was problematic. <laughs> and he did throw that man into the stands on his, was that his debut. Or, like in early summer parents, I remember him just coming on and completely smashing someone over the, yeah. over the line and being like, okay. Although Matteo Joseph has now taken on that role, hasn't he, where he just comes on and shoves people about. Well, maybe his future is 17 games in the J-League and one goal. Wow. That's not great. Is, is he playing centre-back? <laughs> <laughs> Him and Jorginho Ruta, which reminds me, uh, oh, we'll do it in a, we'll do it after we've got a clip of Dan James scoring. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll hear we'll hear a bit of Dan James abuse first. In fact, I will say the, that's what that's what we like, the little scum bastard. He <laughs> <laughs> was born in Beverly. It's a fair point. He was born in Beverly. It sounds like a, an advert for. <laughs> <laughs> for that part of the world. He wasn't having it, was he, actually, um, whole boy, with the Dan James abuse. He was like, born in Beverly, and he just showed him shaking his head when he was when this, this was going on. What, what does that mean? He was... Oh, because it's, it's not, not his, his country. country. Right, it's okay. just, like, someone he plays for. And City Reject was the chant I was trying to remember on the match mm-hmm. ball. I couldn't remember what that was when the penny dropped, that they were angry about him leaving whole youth. Mm. Get over it. Anyway, yes. should we hear Dan James scoring? Yeah, let's do it. Hear that the final minute again. Why is Ryan also left? Why? That's it then. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, that is it. Yeah, fair enough. Season done. Fair play to Leeds. All the best in the Prem. Ah, it's Daniel James to win it as well, innit? Yeah, fair enough. Daniel Blooming James. We go again next year. We're so poor. So poor. Season done. Season done. They're yeah, only six points off the playoff. I like it. I like it in, in that shot being blocked before Dan James has even kicked the ball. He's congratulating us on our promotion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's gone from going, we can get an equaliser right now. Well done, Leeds. Uh, all the best of the Premier League. Yeah. He had a lot more faith in Dan James's finishing than probably re- the rest of Elland Road. He had mm. that ball in as soon as it's left his foot. And what that reminded me, so the goal I was trying to remember, the goal that never was, um, that could have been scored from inside our half, was end of January, Norwich at home. Ruter was on the break and he was about to shoot from inside our half or at least to go get an angle past the defender and shoot and the referee blew up and gave us a free kick. Yes, that is ringing a bell now. And that was, it was a night game, I think. So I was, I remember being in here and saying like we'd been robbed of a great, great moment. Mm. Um, and there's, I watched the footage back and you can see Farker is on the touchline with the, the fourth official. And it was only, we were only leading 1-0 so if we'd have messed up that free kick, if you know, if we'd coopered it straight past Casilla or something, then we would have had problems. But yeah, Farker was. Please, why, why are we not just letting us uh, score goals and have fun? But that was the one I was trying to think of, not uh, um, the Rudy Austin one from a lot longer. <laughs> Which I still can't ago. remember. I, I don't think so. I watched that game. I think I was because there's very few games I've not watched, and I think that's it was Spurs, wasn't it, in the mm. FA Cup. Um, and it's either that one or the Man City game from the Warnock era that I, I missed, but I can't mm. remember which one it was. I could, and I think it was that one because it was all Michael Brown against his former club, and I was like, I don't want. Yeah, to and we, I, we were like, things to do. I'm sure we were. I went actually went to that, and I can't remember what happened. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we were a couple down fairly early, and it was like, uh, 
the, the one I remember of Rudy Austin is his, it's a shot against QPR that he volleyed against the crossbar the way it was almost like mm. it was like a longer range Yaboa and I, I wish that had uh, happened there was a poll actually on, on Wacko about that James shot saying um, if the ball was placed where James shot from would you be able to score an open go- into an open goal um, what do you reckon nah to, I nah. said nah nah for the kick it about 12 yards in front of me <laughs> well uh 24.63 percent of people thought they would score from there which well, i think is optimistic maybe those are the accounts of all the um leeds united players who have secret logins and read what people are saying about them <laughs> possibly so but yeah I, I don't think i'd get anywhere near to be perfectly honest um back to the whole boy then here he is he's he's kind of saying he's losing his voice i think because he's been shouting and i think he he might have said he'd been a bit, had a bit of a cold or something, but he, his voice is breaking up and his mate starts picking on him. We can be proud of this performance. Well, we put in such an effort, such work right with us. like you're going to cry. It does sound like I'm going to cry. I'm proud. He wins that ball so much. Now, his mate there says he wins that ball so much. Are you familiar with that he yes. wins that ball so much clip? No, I don't know that one. <laughs> It's, I, I was really pleased that I, I was. it triggered a memory for him. I was like, that guy, yes. It, um, I managed to find the clip. It's from something called the Peaky Pundit. It's a few years ago. It's scum have drawn at Southampton one all. It must be not long after they signed Aaron Wan-Bissaka because scum fans still obviously have some hopes for him. Um, and Imagine. This, uh, yeah, exactly. Is he still there? Yeah. Oh, who knows? He, he played left back the other day. Oh, did he? Yeah. They hate him, though. I'm almost certain because they hate everyone. They hate all their players, don't they? Um but this is uh, an old man getting a bit a bit emotional about Aaron Wambasaka. I think that right back's something different. I think he's yeah. I think Aaron is brilliant. He wins. You look emotional, mate. I'm with you. I'm with you. Go on, let it out. He wins that ball so much. Brilliant. What? Why are you getting emotional? Why is it upset you? I'm with you. We dropped two points today. <laughs> I love that. Have I never heard that before? <laughs> It's in the same genre as the the guy bringing up and crying about Mickey Quinn, isn't it? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got so many goals. <laughs> I was I was when you were loading that clip up there. I was trying to think of um, of of how to maybe uh, copy it in that um, beautiful Manchester drawl. And then, of course, he's not from anywhere near Manchester. The lad no, sounds very farmery. <laughs> yeah, is that Bristol? Much. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere down there, I'm it would sure. have been very different. He wins that all so much. <laughs> I'm getting, the... getting a bit emotional. <laughs> sure Thinking have... about it, we dropped two points. <laughs> <laughs> we'll finish on a bit of actual mank, but we'll hear from a Chelsea fan TV before then. Um, a drunk man. They drew with Burnley, didn't they? This is a drunk man outside the ground. having He watches a lot of YouTube and he's not happy with Chelsea fan TV. But then uh, he's so drunk by the end, he seems to have forgotten that he's not happy with them. <laughs> Right, I watch your channels. I'm a Eunice fan and I'm a Johnny Minnells fan, right? Okay. And you don't tell how it is. Right. This is shit. Yeah, 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 but we know I it's know shit. it's shit. Yeah, but are you both... Uh, Matt, I know you. Yeah. I watch you. Yeah. And I watch Charlie. <laughs> and I watch Father, right? Because I'm a Chelsea fan and I watch you on podcasts. So I'm loving it seeing you today. <laughs> right, loving it seeing you. It sounds like the end of a wedding. Just <laughs> someone bowling around, shouting into the void. Oh, dre- dredging up a, a <laughs> grudge from <laughs> generations back. It's lovely to see you, but what your grandfather did. <laughs> <laughs> we won't call and stand that anymore. Occasionally people ask us if we'll ever do anything like stood outside the ground. And that is why I know. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want a drunk man yelling at me. More than they already do. No. Or you don't want to film it, rather? No. Well, God, no. Um, Should we hear from a scum fan? Yes, absolutely. Saeed TV, because they obviously went a goal up. They got battered by Brentford, didn't they? Then they went a goal up in about the 97th minute. Then Brentford equalised straight after. Saeed TV was live streaming this. A combination of his upset and his... I think he gets very loud at points, so his mic cuts out because it kind of starts clipping it because it's like that shouldn't be making this noise. Um, but a combination of upset and his mic doing weird things means it sounds like he's a bit possessed at the point that Brentford score. We've robbed this. Oh, no. They're in here. They're in, they're in. Mom. No. No, man. So good to you, man. Wow. 
Has someone checked on him? Is he all right? <laughs> he did see. He seemed to be upright still at the end of it. So it sounds like. Do you remember that Ghost Watch documentary from the early nineties where the BBC did a they. It was on Halloween, and they they broadcast from inside uh, a haunted house and made people think that Michael Parkinson and Sarah Green had been <laughs> offed by a ghost. It reminded me of. Um, it's pretty much like that. Yeah, it sounded like an exorcism. Derek, is Derek Corrin no longer with us? Uh, no, I believe he's with um, all the pets that he pretended to be able to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> it's been for a couple of years. I'm getting the word. Uh, so what's next, Michael? Don't say that about Webby and O'Neill, because they're coming up next. Oh, no. well, Alive and kicking <laughs> and very uh, straightforward fellows. Yes, yeah, so O'Neill, he's, as Moss goes for me, he's a hard man. Well, you said he'd been a... You said he was like Britain's hardest football hooligan or something. I've never said a word about him. You was have. You definitely a... told when? me that. When we first had him on, you were like, oh, just be a bit careful. He's hard as nails, this bloke. He might have been on a Danny Dyer show, Britain's hardest vloggers. Anyway, he's, he's reformed I think, now. I think generally, um, I look at anybody who weighs more than about nine stone and just assume they're a lot harder than me. <laughs> And I need to be careful. That's probably the category that I was putting him in. Okay, well, he's, he's a non-violent man these days. Uh, he's a football man, but he's also an unsupportive birthing partner. Tonight, I didn't see fight from a lot of the players out there. They looked like they were not even interested in the match. Like they didn't want to be there, some of them. There's more fight in a woman giving birth. I'm telling you, there's more fight, right? There was nothing out there tonight, any positives in any way whatsoever. Mm -hmm. That's a very strange reference in this context. Like the, the pregnant woman is closing down the ball, getting the crowd up. What does he mean? Because as well, it's, I don't know if, I don't know if you've, if you've been for a, have you ever seen a childbirth? No. So it's a grueling process. Yeah. I think if you started saying you're not giving it 100% here, <laughs> it wouldn't land all that well. No. Come on. Do you actually want this kid? <laughs> Fucking hell. You've got to die for that. <laughs> For three points. <laughs> You've got to really want it, love. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> so I don't know if he was there, because he, he's as an extra plot twist. I'm pretty sure he's talking to his son here. So he's kind of criticising his... Right. The, well, he's saying, to, he's, he's saying to the person interviewing him, your mum didn't put any much effort, to be well, honest. No, she put in more effort than Bruno Fernandes, mm. for example. So, But it implies that, that it was a low bar. Maybe yes, it was an elective true. cesarean and he was against it or something. He was like, come on. <laughs> like, but it's, it's medical advice. No, fuck off. Get, just Where's get stuck commitment? in. <laughs> get some blood on your boots. <laughs> Gotta wear your heart on your sleeve. After nine months. <laughs> just, he's, he's, you he can't went, just let it go now. He went on to describe it as a Jekyll and Hyde performance um, in recent weeks as well. So I don't know if that applies to the same across the... It does go on for a while, does childbirth. Mm. So I don't know if it'd be like, it was early stages was good. Some promising signs there, but you've let yourself down towards the, the business end. Then they got a different doctor in with a hunchback and things went all right. <laughs> a lot of doc there are a lot of doctors there. It's, it's an horrible business. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it to be honest. What formation were the doctors playing? Oh, there were about eight of them. Was it? Oh, it was a it was an horrible business. Got it was twins on it. So right. you've got to have like that's like an anaesthetist, two pediatricians, other people. Doing stuff. Were you there giving advice? Put your two penneth in? I'm just, just shouting, fucking come on. <laughs> Salt it out. Stuff Close like that. down. That's uh, Peter Reed's um, legendary advice to his Leeds team, which was, oh no, it was to Sunderland, wasn't it? Throw ins, for and against. Sort them out. <laughs> and they sent them out. So, yeah. yeah. I, I was saying it to the doctors, to my wife, to everyone, really. Sort it to, out. Just sort it all out, this. It's gone on too long. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, is that the final clip of propaganda for this week? That'll do for this week. That'll do for this week. Great. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in. If you watch on YouTube, thanks for listening uh, across all of the, pop for, play, the podcast platforms. Um, we will see you uh, later this week with the weekly show and to catch up with Phil. Thank you very much. And we will speak to you later. Bye. The Square Ball Podcast. 